Hello! In the following few videos I will be discussing how to replace the appearance of the units in the advanced turn-based tile toolkit, uh, whether you are using um, humanoid skeletal meshes or skeletal meshes that are not humanoid and use a different rig or if you are using something else entirely such as a static mesh uh, I will show you how to set it up so it works well with the toolkit. Um, for this, uh, for these tutorials, I have uh, added two content packs that are available for free uh, on the Epic Marketplace and provided by Epic themselves. These are both from their Infinity Blade assets, namely the Infinity Blade Adversaries um, and the Infinity Blade Warriors pack. So Warriors has a lot of skeletal meshes characters. Um, while the adversaries has uh, a lot of different kinds of creatures that use uh, different kinds of skeletal meshes. Um, so you will not uh, necessarily need to use these. Um, you can have whatever humanoid skeletal mesh you want, whatever skeletal mesh that does not use the default uh, humanoid uh, epics default humanoid rig uh, if that is a different humanoid rig or something else then that works too uh, and you just need some static mesh I'm just gonna use like the default editor cube so you can use that too as well if you don't mind it looking a bit blocky so yeah without further ado let's start setting stuff up uh, so this is the default uh, example map that comes with the toolkit. Uh, I think this will fit our purposes pretty nicely, but we don't need uh, quite as many units uh, placed around here. When I'm testing out animations, I find it's usually useful to have you know, one enemy unit so you have something that you can hit and that can hit you and can kill you and so on, so you can check out all these different kinds of animations. So let's keep this guy and then we will be adding our new uh, friendly player unit that we can test out. Um, so if we want to start making a unit, uh, what blueprint should we base this on? So if we look in the advanced turn-based tile toolkit folder, we will see that there is a unit folder here. And this has all the more high-level units, so these are all based on the core unit, which you will find in the core folder under units which is BP unit this is like the base unit blueprint that all our units are based on it has you know, all the stuff like movement code and it has variables for health and damage and uh, like pathfinding preferences and other things like that um, though it is completely invisible it is not rendered so it has no health bar it has no mesh nothing like that so this is like the basis unit that we need to build upon. You can use this unit in the game and it works, but it is of course invisible. Um, so uh, there are two different ways I would recommend uh, start making a unit. One would be to create uh, a child blueprint of BP unit, um, and then you can make everything from scratch, but it's probably easier uh, to go to the units folder and find BP unit anim, uh, so the animated unit, uh, which this debug unit is again based on. The, the debug unit, by the way, is just the same as the anim unit, just with some uh, extra construction script code so that the material is automatically set to red if it is an enemy and stuff like that. So uh, you should never use the debug as a basis. This is just for quick testing. But BP unit anim, that's a good starting point. Uh, I would not create a child blueprint class of this, I think, because then we don't have uh, all the control of modifying all this stuff. If we create a duplicate, then we have all the same control as we do have uh, if we create a child blueprint uh, of BP unit, but we have some stuff to, um, to use and we can use and throw out uh, depending on what we need. So yeah, I created a duplicate uh, and then let's call this one BP unit humanoid uh, because we will start with making a humanoid unit using the default humanoid rig uh, that Epic uses. So let's take a look at this one. So here we have all the code that's used to animate the unit. That's mostly what this stuff is for since um, most of the actual gameplay logic stuff is handled within the parent uh, blueprint BP unit. So most of so all of this really is for animation and for animating also and showing the health bar which is included. Uh, in this unit here. So if we take a look at the skeletal mesh here, we have the SK uh, mannequin. 
Um, so uh, this one uses the uh, humanoid rig that um, Epic uses for all of their humanoid um, skeletal meshes as well as which is a requirement for any humanoid skeletal mesh that is uploaded to the marketplace. So um, all of them should be able to use the same animations but you generally need to make some modifications. If we take a look at this skeletal mesh we can find it um, in our folder structure by clicking here and we can see SK Mannequin. If we open up this, we can see that the skeletal mesh that is being used for this is the UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. And the naming convention for this isn't entirely consistent uh, between uh, the various Epic projects, so this might be different. So we, uh, I know that in this case we will have to tell uh, Unreal Engine that we will. Uh, this is the specific uh, skeleton mesh that we want to, or skeleton we want to use. Uh, so let's figure out how we want our new unit to look. If we go into the Infinity Blade Warriors and Character folder, Complete Character, we have a few different ones. Uh, I kind of like the Cardboard unit, which looks like this. Um, so let's take him as our basis. So if we go back to BP Unit Humanoid, the new one we made, and look at its mesh, we can then change this to the Cardboard version. Uh, and if we compile, we can see that he is still T-posing. Uh, and if we place him also then into our level, he is still T-posing and he has a rifle between his legs. And if we play, uh, we see that he moves and when we click attack, nothing happens. So a lot of stuff is broken here, but this should be very quick to fix. Um, so. How do we do this? If we find his skeletal mesh again to the, in the, the cardboard character here, uh, we can left click it and skeleton and assign skeleton. Um, yeah, we should check by the way which skeleton he is using. He's using SK Mannequin Skeleton. So this is the exact same skeleton, it's just named differently. So let's make the engine aware of this. We select the skeleton that we had that we are using by default in the toolkit, which is the UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. And if we look through all of these different bones here, we can see that they are named exactly the same and we have the same number and so on. So this is the same rig. Uh, after we accept this, and let's just save all, and yeah, we didn't even need to compile, we can see that he is animated. And if we start playing, ah, something's still not right. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay. The anim class should be set to our animation blueprint. ABP units. And this should be working. I don't know why it seemed to be working before. This needs to be set up always. So now if we try... Yeah, animations are working. And if we are hit, that works. And yeah, let's just have this guy kill us. And yeah, death animations are good too, and enemy faction wins. So this is all well and good, but what if we want to change his animations, not just the skeletal mesh that is used? Um, and uh, we can do this in a number of different ways. I'm going to start with the simplest one that um, gives you the least customization, but which works uh, in many cases, which I've used to make the uh, melee version of the animation blueprint. Uh, I'm going to show how to do it here. So we are using the ABP unit animation blueprint for this guy. And so if we want to have like the same general setup for how animations work, we want to have, you know, the move animation work the same way. We want to have a hurt animation that is hit when, uh, that, or that is played when he is hit. We want to have an attack animation when he attacks. We don't want to have any like major changes to how the animation uh, is set up itself, then we can just create a child blueprint of the ABP unit animation blueprint. So we can take this here, and again, I'll just call it humanoid. And um, 
Let's see. So when you have a child blueprint uh, of an animation blueprint, you have the opportunity to override animations. Uh, so if you see here, you have the asset override editor. So we can go to the, say, the attack animation. And here we see play shoot, the A shoot, shoot animation. And we can change it to something else instead. So maybe we want to change this then to... Um, yeah, one of these others. I don't have that many to choose between, but let's take the swing animation here, which is the melee attack. So if we now have the humanoid, and if we go back to our new unit, and we change his animation blueprint to the humanoid one, then we should, let's see, yeah, then we have a swing instead. Uh, of a shot and it works here uh, but if you're using a different animation when testing this out you might see that it doesn't uh, and this is because this is set up correctly with the animation notifies we need to use so to illustrate uh, the extra work we need to do there if we go back to the ABP unit humanoid and we change this to an animation which does not have the proper notify set up then it will uh, stop working uh, now I do not have an appropriate animation uh, imported to show this with but I can work the other way if we look at then the swing animation here we can see that it has a couple of notifies it has the action end notify and if we drag this away we can see this is the action hit notify so these are notifies like these are events uh, that are triggered at certain points during this animation and uh, the action hit is used to tell uh, the attack ability that this is the particular animation frame where we want the attack to hit so that is we want to show that the health is re reduced from the health bar and if the enemy unit is killed we want the death animation to uh, happen and so on so I can delete this and the action end uh, this is an important um, notify that is used in most animations in this toolkit is notifies that this is where we want this animation to signal that it has ended uh, if you have watched my uh, tutorial on the action system uh, this will make even more sense but uh, as all the animations in the toolkit uh, are uh, done serially in an action system we need to tell it okay this action is over so now you can then continue to the next action to be animated um, so if we delete both of these so if this is deleted I mean uh, the animations of the game should never continue to the next one so uh, we will never see that it, the next unit is activated for its next turn and so on um, again check my action system tutorial for a better explanation but let's see this then in action yeah let's see let's set up the initiative for our player first so we know that we are always first to so something like 10 and yeah so when I now attack we just keep swinging uh, because it never knows when it's gonna end and health is never reduced so that's why we need to add the notifies uh, so let's just add them right back so I, you can see how it's done um, so let's see here so if we drag through this animation uh, we can see all the frames and we can think okay when do we think it's gonna look best that health is subtracted and yeah right about here is when it should hit so let's add an notify around here add a notify if you are basing this uh, let's see uh, yeah skeleton notify if you are basing this or you're using uh, the um, the skeleton asset that is used for the default units in this toolkit uh, then you should have all of these notifies already if not you need to add them yourself we're going to look at that when we use a different skeletal mesh in the next part of this tutorial so we add an action hit and we also want to signal when the action ends so this animation actually is hitting twice and we just want to do it once so we are that's why I'm ending it early let's just add a new notify and an action end and we drag it to here so that we end the action and proceed to the next one after this has played and when we try again now it should be working there we are 
we will dive a bit deeper into how the animation system works and how it interacts with abilities and so on in the next tutorial uh, where I will discuss these things uh, while I am showing how to add a different skeletal mesh than uh, the default Unreal Engine one. But that's that for this tutorial, so see you in the next one.